Hey, what's up guys? Kristen from Barefoot Theory here. Uh, today I want to talk about the questions that you need to ask before you hire a professional conversion company to convert your Sprinter van. Uh, if you've been following me on Instagram or my blog or any of my other channels, uh, you may have seen little tidbits here and there about things that I've been dealing with and issues I've been having with my build. And I think that if I'd asked the right questions before going into the process, it would have saved me a lot of headache now. So I'm going to go over 10 different questions that you want to ask. Uh, if you have questions afterwards, feel free to shoot me an email and we can chat. So uh, we'll get to it. The first question you want to ask is how many Sprinter vans have you converted? There is a big difference between converting an Airstream, converting a Vanagon, converting a Sportsmobile, to converting a Sprinter. So you want to know if you're hiring someone to convert your Sprinter that they have experience building the type of van that you have. Question number two, what is your design style? So every builder has a different look. So a lot of a lot of people who are building these vans have more of an industrial look. Do you want rustic? Do you want modern? I kind of wanted a rustic modern combination. So you want to make sure that when you're hiring the company that they are willing to go for the kind of look that you are interested in having. Question number three, what are my options for a custom floor plan? Certain companies are going to have pre-designed layouts where you can have a platform bed in the back and a galley here, or they're going to have a dinette in the back and a galley here or whatever. If you want to do something custom, you want to make sure that you ask them, is that even an option or what are the different floor plans and placement of the different components of your van, what different floor plans do they offer and are they willing to work with you on doing something custom if that's what you're looking for. Question number four, what ideas does the builder have to, to make an innovative van that meets your needs? So before meeting with your uh, company, you want to think about what you're going to use the van for. Are you a weekend warrior? Are you going to be living in it full time? Do you want a gear hauler to put your mountain bikes inside? The more clear your vision is for the van that you want before you go have that conversation, the better. Then once you sit down with your builder, you can tell them like, this is the kind of van that I want and see what kind of ideas they have to make your van awesome. Think about how innovative their ideas seem. Do they seem familiar with the products that are used to outfit these vans? Are they coming up with ideas that you couldn't have thought of, thought of on your own? The idea is, is you want to see that your builder is going to create you a better van than you could have thought of without them. And a detailed conversation where you're picking their brain is also going to give you an idea of the builder's personality and whether or not they're someone that you really think you want to work with. Question number five, how long will it take to convert my Sprinter van? So the thing to keep in mind is these conversions do take a lot of time. They're, they're detailed and they're, you know, the, the Sprinters have curved walls. So, you know, it's a complicated build process, but you want to know exactly when to expect your build to be done. Um, and furthermore, those dates need to be in a contract. So when you drop your Sprinter off, you need a signed contract that says, this is when my van will be done and this is what's going to happen if it's not. So that way you have something on paper to hold your builder accountable for the date that they have promised you. I made the mistake and my contract didn't have any solid dates in it and then my, my finish line kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back because other projects were being put ahead of mine. So that's just something to keep in mind. You know, you want to have solid dates so you're not making plans to use your van for the summer, for instance, and then all of a sudden it's not done. Question six, how much is it going to cost to convert my Sprinter van? Seems like an obvious question, <laughs> but as you go through the process, sometimes, you know, your ideas change, your build change, and the price will change. So your builder might not be able to give you like an exact to the penny number uh, when you're you know, working with them um, at the start, but you should be able to get a range and you should be able to get an absolute maximum. So this is the exact maximum and we will not go over this and we will make your build work within this budget. And then, you know, if you want to tinker with things, you know, they, they can tell you whether or not how that's going to change, but at least you have an absolute ceiling that you can expect. And again, that should also be in your contract. Another thing to keep in mind is most conversion companies will require some sort of down payment to get started on your van because they need to purchase materials, pay for labor, etc. Um, be wary of anyone that asks for full payment in advance. Like you definitely shouldn't have to pay full price for your van up front. Um, and 
those down payments should also be listed with due dates in your contract. And I've also been getting a lot of questions about how much my van cost, and I really appreciate everyone's patience. I am going to make a whole video about cost, so if you just subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned, I promise that information is coming very soon. Question number seven, how, how are the products that are used in your van going to be decided on? So you need to be involved in that decision making process along every step of the way. So even if you're hiring someone else to do your van, you should be an active participant in deciding what's going into your van. So for instance, like when you're deciding what kind of fridge you want, certain fridges draw more power than others. You should be an active participant in making that decision about what kind of fridge you want. Same with your solar panels. You know, solar panels come in all different shapes and sizes, and you want to make sure that your builder is going to include you in that conversation so you don't end up with something you don't want. Uh, for example, I've already had to replace my solar panels. The solar panels that my builder chose were too large for my roof and extended over the rails that I needed to use to install a roof rack. And with the solar panels, it was impossible for me to install a rack. So I now had to go out and take those solar panels off, fill all the holes that they drilled in my roof to attach those solar panels, and then get new solar panels that would fit better with the rack that I wanted. Question number eight. You wanna ask your builder what type of experience they have working with electrical systems. Knowing how to build cabinets in a van is not the same as knowing how to build out an entire van. So electrical systems are really complicated and you want to make sure that your builder has experience working on them. But you need to figure out if they have experience with solar. If you want solar, you want someone who's worked on solar systems. Um, if you go to like an RV company, a lot of times they might not have the same ex experience with solar because RVers a lot of times depend on generators instead of solar systems. So you just want to make sure that your builder has experience with that. Furthermore, the electrical should not be an afterthought. It should be the first thing you plan. So when I was building my van, I saw pretty cabinets and I thought, wow, that's what I want. And we focused a lot on the woodwork and the electrical was a little bit, kind of came second. And I think if I were to do it again, I would definitely think about the electrical first. So the electrical also includes heat and how you're gonna heat your water if you have a shower. So. Um, figuring out where you're going to place that heater and that whole system before you think about the rest of the van is really important because if you build the cabinets first and then you think about the heater second, you might not have a place to put it and you might end up having to retrofit a lot of your original build. The heater I have in this van is made by Wabasto and it heats both the water and the air. So something to keep in mind is if you want to have a Wabasto heater in your van, they can only be installed by certified Wabasto installers, otherwise it voids the warranty. So if that's something you want in your van, you need to make sure that your builder is qualified to install them, otherwise it voids the warranty on a very expensive part. Question number nine, you absolutely should ask your builder for references for previous van builds that they've done. If they're not willing to provide reference or they can only provide one, it probably means they've only done one van or they only have one person who's willing to provide them a positive reference. If I could go back, I would have asked my builder for three different references that I could contact. I would ask them questions about how they felt about their build and how it was holding up over time. And the last and final question is, are they going to provide you a signed contract and is there a warranty for the work that they're doing? So it seems obvious we've talked about the the contract a little bit when we talked about the down payment and the dates, but your builder should absolutely provide you a contract. You're spending a lot of money and if they're not willing to give you a written agreement, then they're probably not someone you want to work with. Furthermore, in that contract, you want to see if there's a warranty for the work that they've done on your van. If you drive your van and three months down the road, all your cabinets are falling apart, are they going to fix them for free? Because you spent a lot of money, you want to make sure that the work that they've provided is guaranteed. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you're in the process of thinking about having a professional convert your van, uh, I've done a bunch of other van videos and I have more coming. Uh, if you want to be kept in the loop, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the button below. And thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.